Hello folks, uh, welcome to another Kent Models video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about paint and applying paint to a body. Some tips and some tricks, some bits to use, things to consider. And I'm going to uh, paint uh, parts of a body and look at surface preparation and also finish. So if you're interested in uh, how we do things and maybe uh, getting some ideas for yourself, then stick around. I'm just gonna go on for a little bit, but if you're interested in progressing your hobby a little bit more, as always, stick around and we'll try to help as best we can. So what we've got here is an array of Mr. Hobby products, of course. Uh, we've got a spray booth, uh, which we obviously got in our shop. Um, we've got a random uh, body um, that we've just got kicking around, which we're gonna use and abuse for this video. Uh, we've got uh, a paint station, we've got some clips, um, We've got some thinners, some paints, and we've got some airbrush. So um, I'm gonna go through things one by one, so uh, bear with me. And uh, if you've got any questions, obviously put them in the comment section at the end. Um, so to begin with, uh, as always, uh, use as much as you can, you're gonna get the best finish. So when it comes to products, the more you've got, uh, the better it is. Of course, we're gonna say that. We supply things to model making folks, but all these things have got a purpose they've all got um, uh, a use so the more you have and the more you grow your collection of tools and and uh, uh, supporting bits and bobs the easier you're going to find your builds and the better you're going to find the, the finish is going to come out so before i get started um, with the paint side of things i'll start from almost from the end and we'll talk about removing paint so this body is one that uh, my son and i painted and we've decided that this is gonna be our uh, test mule for this uh, video. Um, so we painted this, it was originally white, and we painted it with primer, uh, Mr. Surfacer, and also then we've gone over it with uh, uh, orange, uh, Mr. Hobby Paint. Now this isn't, uh, is this, I can't remember if I lacquered this or not. I think I might have done, I might have put a top coat on it as well, I can't quite remember. Anyway, so it's kind of finished, um, and if we were to assume that there's bits of this that maybe we wanted to take off, now, when it comes to your paint, if there's areas where, for whatever reason, you want to take them off again, uh, take the paint off again, um, you can. And there's a little product, which is uh, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Paint Remover, which looks just like this. Obviously, you'll find it on our site. And I'm just going to quickly show you what it does. It's pretty straightforward. It's a paint remover. So, <clears throat> if I was to take the back end of our car here, and if I didn't want that, what I'm about to do is make a big mistake. So, what you want to do is put some paint remover in a tray of some sort because this will uh, get more and more color into it the more paint you take off. So now, it may be difficult to see, but if I wanted to remove this paint just on this section here, I'll dab it on, I'll just leave it for a second, and I'll begin to rub it with a brush. And you probably won't be able to see it on the video, but what's now happening is it's loosening the paint and I'm now pushing around the orange and now I'm starting to go through I'll get a bit closer into the primer and this body was white originally so I know I'm at the primer because the things are turning grey now I want to see where I'm at I'll just give it a quick wipe off to see where I've got to so far you see how easy that's come off and now I'm at the primer stage now I want to go a little bit further so I'll keep going now we'll see the more of this you put on, the longer you leave it and the more aggressive you are with brushing it in. Also, you could use the um, Mr. Hobby cotton buds for this. I'm just doing this with a brush just because it's easier just to show you on the video. But essentially, so obviously I'll keep putting new remover on there. And essentially, what it's done, exactly as it said on the tin, is it's began to take the paint off. Now, you can probably see that on the video, what it's done there. Obviously, if I persevered with that, I can make a much better job of that. So, for example, if you want it, if you overpainted something, or maybe you've got something wrong, or you've got a run in it, or something is just, it could be done better, and you want to take the paint off and start again, that's a great product for that. Of course, what you could do is if you wanted to make sure that you only took paint off of the specific area that you wanted to, Clearly you could just use some masking tape and then obviously run up to the masking tape and then when you're done, peel it off. 
Generally, whatever you put that remover on, it's going to take it off when it comes to paint. So you need to be very careful about how you use it. But unlike when you get glue on your paint job and it goes all sticky, this paint remover just generally just gently takes it off and it will take it off layer by layer as well. So that's a great little one to have in your arsenal of, of products um, to keep on one side because you never know when you're going to need those. I mean, there's so many times when we've all done a paint job and kind of done a bit that hasn't come out quite how you wanted it to be. And now it's done, you think, oh, I can't really do a lot with that. So by taking it, with, by using the paint remover, you haven't got to try to scrape anything back or rub it down. You literally put it on, apply it, and then you can obviously uh, prepare it again and, and blow it over and maybe and blend it back in again. So that's a classic example of how to use it. And of course, look now, it's done, it's not sticky at all. It's, it's gone off, it's good. So um, pretty straightforward, uh, the paint remover, okay? Now, when it comes to uh, paints, all of the paints that we sell and have in the shop is Mr. Hobby, which as you'll know for Aoshima and Fujimi, they are the official uh, paints of those kits. And on the side of every box from those two manufacturers, you'll find the codes that you need that relate to the different H numbers that obviously correspond to our website. So that's where you'll find those. There's also a paint swatch that we've made that goes out of every kit that lifts all of the 10 mil uh, brush paints, uh, which are these ones. And then on the flip side of it, there's all of the spray can colors. Uh, obviously there's much more of a range in these 10 mil jars that can be used with a airbrush kit than there are the spray can colors. So if you're intending on building more kits, the way forward is to do it with an airbrush, uh, an airbrush kit. Um, whilst doing that, I, I basically assembled quite a few paints and things that me and my son have been using just to kind of show you in the video. Um, this little gadget from Mr. Hobby is superb. Um, obviously, it's a jar opener and it comes in two parts. Now, when you've got new paints, this is kind of a bit of a waste of time because new paints, they open nice, it's great, you know, no problem at all. But when you've used them once or twice, the paints obviously dry hard in the lid and then suddenly you it's very difficult to undo the jar sometimes. So people that maybe suffer with problems with their hands or arthritis and stuff like that, this tool is magnificent. But generally, to be honest, even if you've managed to leave a paint for a while and it's gone hard, sometimes it's really difficult to take it off. So this little product, you put your jar in this sort of squidgy rubber cap, which means it holds the jar, and literally you put it on, and it just makes light work of undoing your jars. Now both ends you can use either Mr. Hobby, it's used with Mr. Hobby jars and also Tamiya and they're, they're both slightly different um, in their uh, the little teeth there. Obviously on the website and on Mr. Hobby's instructions it doesn't say anything about Tamiya because they don't talk about the competition but one end is Mr. Hobby, the other end is, is Tamiya and it works with both. So anyway that's a, that's a good starting point. So whilst talking about that there's another product that I mentioned before all related to paint this video, which are these uh, Mr. Ball. So these are quite simply little ball bearings that you get in a packet and you drop them into your paint. Now this is obviously fairly straightforward and quite obvious. Now I've kind of got that spray can ball bearing effect so now I'm mixing my paint and this is particularly good for using obviously putting in your paints if you haven't used them for a while and you, all of the paints need shaking and also remember that when you get paints new from the first time they do require a real good shake up because they are made in Japan they've been on a boat they've been in a warehouse they've been in a truck they come into our warehouse they sat there then we've shipped them out to you there's no guarantee that they're going to be mixed properly so you must shake them properly so this little packet of balls, I think there's 50 or 60 in a bag. <clears throat> They're a genius little idea, obviously very straightforward, but uh, if you've got just any kind of other ball bearings, it'll do the same job, but obviously these are made for the job. So we've got those in there and we're shaking up our paint. Jobs are good. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you uh, airbrushing. Now I've done another video that talks about this little airbrush kit um, that we've got here, which uses this uh, propellant in a can but I wanted to talk about the basics that we get asked about which is uh, uh, mixing uh, colours with thinners and how to actually use them and how to paint your model. So 
50-50 is the mix. So 50% paint, 50% thinners. Now whether you use aqueous thinners or you use Mr. Leveling Thinner, it's completely up to you. You'll get a better finish with Mr. Leveling Thinner, um, but it's a little bit more difficult to tidy up afterwards. For this video, I'm gonna use the aqueous uh, thinners and our paint. So 50-50 is the mix. So in your little airbrush kit, you get two jars, spare one and a, and a normal one. And then also the Mr. Mix set has got these pipettes and also these spoons. Now these come into play when you come to mixing your paints properly. So it's imperative to make sure that you get the mix exactly right each time so you've got consistency in, in your paint. So to start with, the pipette has got little markers on it so you can see how much you need to put in. So I want 50% of this, 50% of paint. So I always do the thinners first because if I did the paint, then it will colour the tube. So I'll put that in and I'll work out just how much I want. Okay. So for this, I've managed to put it into the pipette. You maybe can't see on the video, but anyway, I, I know where I've got it. So I can now squirt that into my jar. Okay, so I've got that in there. And now I can move on to be paint. So I need to put exactly the same amount of paint into the thinners to give me the 50-50 mix. Now I'm using this colour just because it was one I had kicking around. So I'll put it in my paint and I'm going to suck up the same amount of paint. Okay, exactly the same as the thinners. So you can see what I'm saying, now I've coloured the tube. If I did the thinners afterwards, I'm not going to know how much is in there. And then I'll squirt that back into my pot. And I'll push it in and suck it back out again a couple of times just to make sure I've got it all out of the, out of the pipette. Okay, now at this stage, this is when things start to get a little bit messy if you're not careful. So I'm done with my paint. I'm only going to put a little bit in there for now because I'm only showing you the process. I'm not actually going to paint this body completely. So we've now got our paint. It's in our jar. It's all good. Now at this point, if you're quite happy with your airbrush setup and you've already practiced it a few times, you know where you're at, you're good to dive straight in and attach it. I'm not going to go through how to do this. If you wonder how to do this and what this is all about, watch the video about this particular product instead. So, in theory, I'm ready to go. The paint's in, it's mixed, the thinners are in there, it's mixed. I've mixed it up, I give it a little bit of a shake. We're happy with that. Now, this is where the paint booth comes into play. Obviously, you can see I've got it set up here, pretty straightforward. Um, I've made this really crude rig because this is essentially how to use this paint station. Um, and what I want to do is just rest the car on it for now. Obviously I've got this little turntable here, no problem. So I've made this before the video started. And the reason the model is upside down is you want to paint the details of underneath first. So it's very easy to paint your car like this and get a lovely finish and get carried away with it. And then when you come to leave it to dry and turn it upside down, you suddenly realise all the bits that you've missed. So good practice is to start with the underside first and get as much on there as you can to get the coverage. Once that's dry, then you can turn it up and, and do the top up, okay? So that's a top little tip there. So I've just got that resting on there for the moment. I don't particularly need to bolt it on or to grip hold of it or anything because I'm not planning on doing anything heavy handed with it. And what we're gonna do now is this extra bit of advice that we, the bit we always get asked is how, to, how much paint to put on. So whether you're doing it with a spray can or an airbrush, you literally just want to dust it on each time. Now you don't need to prepare the body, you don't need to rub it down, you don't do anything like that with it. You can go straight on with the primer or the paint. In this particular case, I'm just gonna go straight on with primer. Uh, sorry, with paint, I'm not gonna prime it. Um, but you don't need to rub it down doing any of those things. People do, and if you wanna get a bit creative, you can do that, but it's not necessary. All you need to do is make sure it's dust free, You've wiped off any finger marks or anything else from it, and obviously you can use a little bit of aqueous thinners to do that. And just make sure it's clean and it's ready to go. Pretty straightforward. Now this body, I haven't prepped it at all. All I've done is put it on there because it's just for a video. We're not going to do anything with this model. I'm not actually going to build it. 
So what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to turn the machine on in a moment, which all it's going to do is just act as an extractor and pull all the paint away because I'm doing this in, indoors at the moment, uh, at least in the office. Um, and I'm going to slowly do some building up and hopefully you're going to see on the video just how much I mean by dusting it on, waiting a minute, dusting it on. All we want to do is keep building it up and building it up and building it up. So to begin with, I'm going to play around with the flow on my airbrush and make sure I've got it in a happy place, which again, you can find in the other video, and then I'm just gonna dust it on. So hopefully you're gonna be able to hear me over the video when I turn this extractor on, which I'm about to do. So as you can hear, it's not massively noisy. So what I wanna do now is I'm just gonna test my airbrush, and you can see straight away just how gentle I'm being with it. Now I'm focusing on the inside of the arches, underneath the bumper maybe, and just inside the, the crevices that I'm not gonna catch if I did it the right way up. And now of course the beauty of this comes into play, I'll just turn it around, here we go again. And I can dust it on a little bit more. I'm just gonna adjust my airbrush a little bit. Okay, so I'm happy with that for the moment. So as you can see, I've managed just to put a dusting on there. Obviously it's still wet. I'm manhandling it because I don't really care for this kit, it's just for the, uh, for the video. But you can see I've started to just dust some on there and that's good enough for the moment. So depending on what the temperature's like in your house or in your garden or your garage or wherever you're doing this, will depend on how long it's gonna take for that to dry. So like all things, all good things come to those that wait. So you need to be patient and you need to wait for that to go off. And then once it has gone off, again, for the purpose of the video, let's assume that I've waited. We'll set it up again. And we'll go back to dusting on a little bit more. And just building the coats up and making sure that we're getting to all of the angles and the crevices that we want without piling too much on. Okay. I'll let that run just for a second. So now all that's done, what I'm trying to avoid was getting too much on the body because I'm going to paint that later. So I'm only trying to just get it into these cracks that you wouldn't necessarily see. Now if I was to turn that, we'll assume that's dry, even though it's not. I'll turn it up the other way. Of course, you look at the car now, it doesn't even look like it's had any paint on it. So if we were painting this for the first time, just going through the motions, again, I begin with just laying down a dusty. Now what you want to do when you're painting is you don't want to be doing this. You don't want to be doing any arcs, you want to be doing it nice and straight. So you've got the same amount of paint across the model on all surfaces that you're painting. Okay, very important that. Now if you find that you've got any problems whilst you've been painting, the easiest thing to do is to let it dry and deal with it later on. So if you find any imperfections or any bits of dust or anything like that, just leave it to dry. Don't be tempted to stick your finger in it or to poke it or to do anything else with it. Just leave it to dry because once it goes off, it'll be way more easier to deal with. So we'll assume that that body's all fine. It's all great. I painted it. It's great. No problem at all. So we're done with that. Now, <clears throat> on one of the other videos, I expressed the desire that if you wanted to, you could use your sprues for different things. Now, you can see here, I've made a little rig. Where I've... Sorry. I've, I've got my sprue and I'm using it now in the same way that I use the paint station to hold up this gearbox and engine that I uh, painted, uh, assembled. So here we go. I've got it now and I can just use that old sprue that I would have just thrown in the bin as a way of holding up my part. 
top tip that is absolute top tip obviously these clips that I'm using are the double ended type um, that are from Mr Hobby and this one I've broken them in half just to put them on the paint stand station so that's your, your painting so again another question we're always asked and about, about finishes is when you've painted your model and you're happy with it you must wait a good 24 hours for it to go off it's very tempting to see if it's touched dry oh it's fine no problem when you start manhandling your model you'll find you'll put fingerprints in it so you need to paint it and leave it for 24 hours so that applies to applying the surface surf primer the, t the uh, actual color coat and any uh, gloss coat over the top every one of those steps is 24 hours to wait now if you're impatient to say you you'll find that uh, uh, you'll get fingerprints on it now the drying time also depends on how well you did your mix of your thinners so the more thinners you put in the longer the drying time essentially so it's a bit of a trade-off and experimenting with 50 50 60 40 all those different things is, is going to be key but 50 50 is what you want to be doing now of course if you were just using rattly cans you wouldn't be worried about any of those things that i've just spoken about all you do is you pop it out and you'd just be spraying it on but you'd still be dusting it in the same way now the difference between model paints and normal automotive paints you're going to find in Halfords and so on is the pigments and the actual uh, makeup of these paints they're much more uh, finer than what you're going to get from a normal automotive paint so when you're looking at details on a car such as the door handles and shut lines these modeling paints they're perfect for re retaining all of those details if you use a big heavy car paint that's supposed to be for a massive great panel you're going to find you're going to cover up a lot of those details which is going to effectively ruin the realism of what you're trying to achieve so always use modeling paint um, on from there um, the next tip uh, is about your finished paint job so here this body that my son and I have painted you can probably see from the video and I hope you can some of the orange peel effect on the paint now we can help with that now what I'm going to show you quickly if I can is a bit of before and after so I'm going to take some masking tape sheet and I'm going to tape over the top of the roof okay so I'm, I'm not going to this is just to show you the effect of trying to get rid of some of the orange peel okay now with the finishing abrasive sheets again which you'll find in our shop what you can do is you can rub down your paint finish as long as you've got enough paint on there and if you've got clear on there obviously the, the better it's going to be because you can rub them through the clear and you can rub down the paint okay now this is super fine and again for the video I'm not being particularly careful with the model because I don't really care for it but if you were doing this you would probably be masking off any other areas that you didn't want to touch with the finishing abrasives so what I'm doing is I'm just going over the surface and, and trying to rub down some of the orange peel effect that came in the paint for whatever reason okay so I could pursue that to do with that a lot more but I'm not going to for this video and now what I can do is I've rubbed that down you can see how I've rubbed it down how I've, the effect of it you see now we've got another new product which we're just about to launch which is our hyper polish now this is a polishing compound for paint and maybe what most of you do or don't know i have no idea is that as part of our family business one of the things we also do is manufacture car care products so we've had a look at our catalog and what we've got and we've worked out that one of the products that we manufacture is absolutely beautiful for modern making paints so we've created this new little inexpensive polish that we're going to make available to everybody for this purpose so i rubbed it down 
too bit off there because I'm moving the camera. So now I'm going to polish it back and try to see what I'm left with. Now it's very careful, you have to be very careful to make sure you don't get it on the, the shut lines and rub it down too much. Now what we're going to find, if I did this properly, and I'll buff it back up again, is that we've now got a finish which looks much more like car paint and less like orange peel. Now I'm hoping to be able to see if I catch the light right. So this is the side that I flatted and polished and that's the side that I didn't. So you can still see hopefully in a video the orange peel effect on that side is where I started and this side in what I've rubbed down and, and re-prepped. So if you want to get that realistic finish and get rid of all your orange peel, then you need to use this uh, finishing abrasive and also the polish and suddenly you've got a finish that looks like a real car. Now, this is gonna get more and more difficult to do when you start going around front bumpers and all this kind of stuff. But that's where things like the uh, modeling buds are gonna come into play where you can obviously use those for both the abrasives and also uh, the polish. So that's your paint job. So once that's all done, happy days. Obviously you'll see there, what I did use was this masking sheet, which comes in a roll. So if you're painting bodies, it's already got the tape attached to it. So you can mask stuff off with absolute ease. Now on the subject of masking tape, it's the last final thing we're gonna talk about. We also sell this three millimeter wide tape. Now this tape is specific for model making and I'll just take a bit off. The genius of this tape is the edge is very fine, so you're not going to get any bleed through your paint if you apply it properly, but it can also be used around curves. It's designed to be used around curves. So if I was to go down the side of the car, that's probably better. If I wanted to make a, a swooshy line down the side of my car, I could and now obviously I could prep that, I could paint it, and I could mask up the rest of it. Suddenly, I've got a custom paint job. Likewise, if I wanted to put a real nice stripe all the way down the side of the car, you can put some tension on it and make sure it's straight. Suddenly, you're in a whole new world of modification. Now obviously you could do this when you're painting the car for the first time, or you could do it over the top. If you're gonna go out and do any kind of custom colors, then I'd recommend that you put all of the colours on first, do all your masking, and then once you've got all that done and you've got your pattern, at that point, then you'd go over your top coat and then you'd obviously glossy and top coat it. Now you can see with this particular model, there's also some black details there. So with cars, any of these black details around the rubbers, for example, these are all flat black, which is our H12 from Mr. Hobby. So these are all flat black. So if you're going to put top coat over the whole of your car, you need to consider at what stage you're gonna put the flat black on, because obviously you want it to stay flat black. So ideally, what you'd do is you'd gloss the whole car, and then you'd go over and put the flat black on. If you couldn't do that, maybe you'd just brush on some flat black over the, uh, some flat gloss over the top of the black afterwards, you know, whichever you want. Obviously you wouldn't gloss over your lights and all these things, those things wouldn't be in the car at all. So hopefully, um, those little pointers there um, is enough for you to consider maybe how you normally paint your cars and bikes um, versus how I normally do it. As always, um, there's so much more to this little hobby um, than uh, I can mention in a video, but if you can take on board some of these things and go away and think about how to do these and it makes your life easier and better, well, that's great, and that's happy days. So. The final thing to mention is this. I promised on the website that I'd tell you how to get one of these Ichiban mugs. For those who don't know, Ichiban means number one in Japanese. And this has Kent models. Uh, it's got our uh, lady uh, with the gun on the back as well and this uh, uh, frosted mug. So all you need to do, this is gonna be in the shop. You can find this from now, from this point on. Um, and all you need to do is add it to your basket. It's got a value, but add it to your basket and use the code MUG, M-U-G, and then when you, when you get to the checkout, put that in and this will become free. Now we're gonna send this out to anybody that does that 
uh, for free at no charge, uh, but it obviously has to go out of a model kit. We can't obviously just send this out on its own. So when you're buying a model kit and we're sending a proper model to you, please add this to your basket and we'll send it out to you. We've only got 50 of them uh, and we'll probably do some more of these kind of promotions of different styles in the future. Um, but uh, if you want one of these, add it to your basket with the rest of your things, go to the uh, checkout page, add in the word mug in the coupon code. This will become free. Happy days, it's all good. Thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. Um, we've got some more coming up, but for the time being, that should be uh, enough to give you food for thought. Thank you.